So today in honors higher algebra, uh, the first 15, 20 minutes we're just doing that um, the set of required slides called All Aboard. But now we're doing a few minutes of asking me questions before we take the quiz called First 20. So there's 20 points. And there's probably a few of you that are like, I really don't get how to do number 17 or whatever. I would love to do a couple practice ones. So what we'll do is I'll show you how to do it after the person asks me, and then we'll do one more to practice that kind, okay? Yes. Absolutely. Would you please read me number 20 of the first 20? All right. So, who knows how you're supposed to start a problem like this? Yes? Distribute. Distribute. Good. That negative got, it has to get distributed to both parts, here and there. So I'm going to do that. 3 minus 2x minus 5 equals 4x plus 7. There is a right thing to do next. What's the next thing? Yes? Uh, 3 goes to negative 5. Yep. These go together. And what do you get when you put them together? Negative 2. And then I still have minus 2x. I could put that in front or after. It doesn't really matter. There is a right thing to do next. Who knows what it is? A lot of people are like, well, can't you do this or that? Well, there's a right thing to do. Get rid of the smaller of the x's. It, the negative one is smaller. And the reason that that's better is because if I put plus 2x on both sides, I won't end up with a negative. If I subtracted 4x from both sides, I would have an extra negative in my problem that I have to deal with later. So get rid of the smaller one. And here, a lot of kids know that you're supposed to subtract 7 next, but they, do, they can't really explain why. Let me explain to you why. You know PEMDAS, right? Did you know that when you're solving equations, you're going from the bottom up? You should always start by adding and subtracting things. And then you do multiply and dividing things. And the last thing you should do is exponents or parentheses, which is actually like grouping symbols. Let me prove it to you. I mean, this one, I, I hope I don't have to finish it, but I will. Negative 9 equals 6x. Now, there was a mistake on the key that, on this problem, so it's yeah, probably worth talking about. All right, all right. So let's finish it. Divide by 6, divide by 6. And right there, I was... Uh, copy in the key, and the key had a mistake on it, and I didn't even catch it, which was that this was negative 3. It's not negative 3. Let's talk about what it actually is. Would you agree that negative 9 is the same as negative 3 times 3? Why are you doing that? Because I'm factoring it. And let me tell you, if you can factor it, you should. I said that so many times that eventually one of my <coughs> smart kids said, I'm going to make him a poster like that. So he made me this. If you can factor it, you should. And he knew I was getting a Cybertruck, so he uh, slapped that on there to make it more fun. But that poster is this. See, if I factored that and canceled these, the answer is negative 3 over 2. There's a lot of ways to factor. This is just one of them. A lot of people get stumped on the one called GCF. Which is the problem that says GCF on it? I can't remember. Which 19. Number 19. Would you read me 19, please, sir, in the front row? 2x parentheses x plus 2a minus 1 parentheses. Okay, now you're giving me the answer. How about give me the problem? Oh. 2x, 2x squared, squared plus 4ax minus 2x. 4ax minus 2x. Okay, and the first thing you should ask yourself is, is there anything that's in common? And yeah, there's a 2 in everything, so that's a common factor. But is it the greatest common factor? No, not until you put the other stuff with it. What also is in everything? X. So then you take out the 2 and the X, and the 2X, that's called the GCF. 2X is the GCF. And then you got to put what's left, though. You can't just, just put 2X. you got to say, if you take out 2X, what you're really doing is dividing by 2X. Did you know that? That's what you're really doing is dividing everything by 2X. And then you see what you have left. What's 2X squared divided by 2X? It's just X. What's 4AX divided by 2X? It's 2a. I need a plus in there. And the last thing is, what's 2x divided by 2x? 1. So there's actually a minus 1 right there. 
And there is your final answer to that one. Could you do that? Because there's going to be a question like that, like in one minute. On the twiz we take. So I'm just going to do one more like that. You ready? 6x squared minus 3xm minus 12. Oh, wait, x. There. That has a GCF. Pull it out to the front, put a parenthesis, and pull what's left. Try it. On your scratch paper, you have scratch paper and a pencil, try it. There's going to be one like this, and this happens all the time in this class. That's why we're doing it. It's because factoring is huge. If I could only pick one thing, and this is a powerful statement, if I could only pick one thing for you to be good at this year, one thing all year that's the most important thing, I'd say it's factoring. And this is just one of many different ways you factor. You find the greatest common factor and put it out front. Would you agree there was a 3 in everything? Yeah, yeah. Would you agree there was an X in everything? Then 3X was the GCF. And what's left after you factor it out would be 2X, because see, if I would did this times this, I'd get 6X squared. Minus 3X times 1 would be 3X, but then I wouldn't have the M, so i got to say 1M, or just M. 1M is the same as M, right? And last but not least, minus 4. Four, because 3x times negative 4 would make negative 12x. And there's your answer. How many of you would have got that one right? Okay, awesome. Any other topics you want to talk about? Yes. Page number 4. Please read it to me. Simplify 2 over 3 plus 4 over 5. All right. The old-fashioned fraction problem, and I'm so glad you asked, because I guarantee you you're not the only one. I'll just give you a quick rundown. You need a common denominator, right? Don't get into complicated common denominators. Just multiply them. What's the good denominator then? 15. Okay, 3 times 5 is 15. So let's use 15. But how do we get a 3 into a 15? And how do I get a 5 into a 15? Different ways. This one I got to times by 3. So you got to times the top by 3. This one you got to times by 5. So you got to times the top by 5. And that gives you 10 fifteenths plus 12 fifteenths. And I bet you you'll find that that's not too hard. 22 fifteenths. And how would you enter this on the, iP on the iPad on the Schoology quiz? Put in 22 fifteenths. Because guess what happens if you do 1 and 7 fifteenths? Doesn't that look like 17 fifteenths? Which is completely different and wrong. Okay, so don't try to do... A mixed number like 1 and 7 fifteenths. I know you meant this, but that's not possible to type on the Schoology, Schoology quiz. Okay, so don't put it this way. That'd be wrong. Leave it that way. It says right in the problem, leave answer as improper fraction. Yes? Could you go over number 12? Sure, one last one. Number 12, read it quick. Uh, negative 3 plus or minus um, 3 root 2 over 3. All right. My favorite saying is, if you can factor it, you should. There's a 3 in both of these. And if I take it out, it's the GCF. It's the greatest common factor. Do you get, it's a lot like what we just talked about, where you figure out, what happens when I divide this by 3? And I divide this by 3. I get negative 1 plus and minus. These cancel. Square root of 2. And why is this better? Because it can just cancel. Everybody in here can cancel at the end. But can you factor this out like that? Let's do one last practice because there is one just like this on the actual quiz. So let's just try one last one like that. Negative 5 plus and minus 5 root 7 all over 25. If you can factor it, you should. Now, there's a chance that somebody's sitting in the wrong seat because you just forgot where your seats are. But if this is correct, Charlotte appears to be absent. Okay, good. She would have said something by now. She was actually here. 
So that's attendance. Would you agree there was a five in common? The common factor was a five. It was not a negative five, it was a five. So I just put a five there. And then I say, what do I have left when I divide everything by five? And I have negative one plus and minus root seven. Sure, you could put a one in front of it, that's legal. All over 25, but if you can factor it, you should, Mr. Server. So don't put 25, put five times five, because then these can cancel. My final answer is negative one plus minus, don't worry, you'll we'll never have to type in a plus minus sign because we don't have a key for that. Square root of seven all over five. So there's one question like this on the, on the Schoology quiz and it asks you for three separate things. It says, what's the first thing? What's the second thing? And then what's on the bottom? It's easy to type negative one and five, but how the heck do you type square root of seven? S-Q-R-T seven, and I accept it with a parentheses or without. That's how you type square roots, S-Q-R-T, because there isn't any S-Q-R-T sign on your keyboard, okay? Yes? Very fast, read it. I do want to help, but you got to read me number 15. Oh, right. X squared plus X minus 1 equals 2. Ah, okay. First step here is you got to set it equal to 0. I know a lot of people haven't taken algebra for like a year and a half. Or maybe you could even argue it's two years ago you learned this. But your starting step is you want to get rid of, sorry, you want to get everything to the left side and make it all equal 0. And then... If this part right here will factor, if you can factor it, you should. The problem is if you sit here and factor it all day, you'll never get it to work. There is no way to get the thing to factor. It won't factor. So then are you just stuck? No. You use this. See if it rings any bell. X equals negative B. Which of these three is B? The one, the one, or the negative three? Which one's the B? This one x equals negative b, I'll just write it out this way, plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Remember, you signed up for an honors class, so asking you to remember a formula you used to know, yeah, that's something we're going to do. you got to know this formula. If you forgot it, re-memorize it. It's critical. It'll come up on the ACT test. It'll come up in this class. It'll come up in next year's class. It'll come up in the year after that, and it'll come up if you're like, but I'm going to be a senior, and I'm going to not have to. Well, you probably still have to take a math class in whatever college you go to, and then you have to take a math placement test. And they, they're like, which class should we place you in? It'll be on there. This is like basic, really important math called the quadratic formula because quadratics are the most common, more advanced function. Like we're in more advanced algebra, so you're going to do quadratics all the time. Got to know this one. So then A is 1, B is 1, C is negative 3. So A is 1, B is 1, C is negative 3. And you just have to simplify that down, and your final answer would be negative 1 plus and minus the square root of 1. And there's a negative 4 and a negative 3 makes positive 12 plus the 1 makes 13 all over 2. There. How do you know what C is? C is the last number. See that negative 3 there? Yeah. It's just the last number in your quadratic. Yes? Uh, I'm sorry, but how do we know if a problem needs the quadratic formula again? If you can factor it, you should. So, like, if it was like this, you should factor it because it'll go so much faster. X and X and minus, uh, let me think, how does this one factor? Um, Negative 7 and positive 1. There, I'd, I'd have to take a minute to multiply that out with first, outside, inside, last to be sure I did it right. But then the answers are 7 and negative 1. And they're so much faster. But you could still use the quadratic formula with A, B, and C. It's just slower. The quadratic formula's got 16 little parts to it. It's a pain in the butt. But you got to know how to do it in case it won't factor. If it factors, then that's the way to go. Okay, do you get the answers on this? Would have been x equals 7. And for this one, x equals negative 1. You guys have seen that before, haven't you? Okay, keep going.
case it's been too long, those are called the answers. They're the thing that makes this equation equal zero. They're called the zeros. All right. I know that was a super fast review of like all of algebra. And I don't expect you to get this perfect quiz right now. But we're going to take it. And you're probably, I'm going to say we're going to hope for a 16. If you can get a 16 out of 20, I'd say that's pretty dang good. That's like in the B range. And I don't expect you to be perfect. But do you get, if you're the kid who gets a 4 out of 20, and the average in the class is a 16 out of 20, then that means you got a little bit of work to do to kind of remember your algebra. And that's going to be mostly on you. You can ask me. I'll help you. But I'm not going to, like, be able to run over to your desk and, you know, help you for 20 minutes every class. You'll have to come in in the morning for some help if you're way behind. But remember, every one of these things has a video. It's at, uh, I've got a, yesterday's, if you had clicked on that link, it's still there. You can click on the link to the first 20 quiz, and there's a video for every single one of these that shows you how to do it. So when we get done today, you'll get a score. I'd say the average will probably be 15 or 16. And if you're way lower than that, take some time to look through those videos. They're also linked in the Schoology quiz we're about to take. At the end, when you scroll back through them, there's little hot links next to each problem, and you can touch them, video pops up, I explain how to do it. I couldn't have made it easier to get the help. Yes? Can we work with a partner? This is an individual quiz right now. This is just you and the quiz and how do you do. Now, after that, absolutely, I love it when people work together, but right now, I gotta see what you can do right this minute. And this isn't like... If you bomb this that I'm saying you should leave honors, I'm not saying that at all. But I'm trying to get you like aware of where your weaknesses are. And where are you really? Like I don't think you know. I don't you'll be able to find out if the average is 17 and you're at 18. Cool, I'm above average in here. Or if the average is 17 and you're getting four, holy crap, I'm way behind. So you'll know where you stand. And you'll be able to fix it. If you throw, I've had kids do that. I remember one kid, one of my favorite things was she came up to me at the end of the semester and she said, Mr. Server, I only got three right on that quiz at the beginning of the year, but now I got 20 out of 20 on it. I totally get it. And I'm so glad we did that because, and if I hadn't helped her fix those, find, fix those weaknesses, she wouldn't have been a straight A student and she was. So I'm helping you find your weaknesses. And that's a really good thing to know what you don't know. Without further ado, open up the Schoology quiz right now. I'll be walking around and picking up your worksheet from you. You start the Schoology quiz, you got scratch paper, you got a pencil, and if you have trouble entering anything, you just walk up and ask me, how do I type this one in? Just ask. My dream world is, uh, since we're out of here at 1240, is that you'll finish before then. If you don't, you officially can have five more minutes at home. So finish it in class if you can, by the way, the fastest ever was four minutes and 20 seconds with all the answers right. Okay, so don't think it's impossible to finish. Four minutes is the record. Eight minutes is pretty good. 20 minutes is actually pretty slow. Okay, so you should be able to do this. And if you're weak at it, you'll just practice until you get good at it. And that's all I have for the video for today.